coming to you from historic Redeemer Lutheran Church in Elmhurst, Illinois. Something that's really been celebrated a few days ago because St. Michael and All Angels Day is actually on the 29th. The pastor and the music director felt it was good to move it this day so that we can focus on these things that would normally be not covered on a Sunday morning. And I agree with that. So, we celebrate St. Michael and All Angels Day today. But why take time to talk about angels? all, that's kind of out of step with our scientific worldview, isn't it? Well, science certainly is very important for the progress of humanity. But, is it the only path to knowledge? Is it the only path to understanding? Religious people, including us Christians, say, no, it is not the only path to knowledge and understanding. Science certainly does a wonderful job in giving us knowledge about the physical world around us and our own bodies. But science cannot produce within human beings wisdom, morality, spirituality. We Christians believe that there's more to reality than just the physical world. We accept the spiritual world in, with, and under the material world as we do with the sacraments, understanding that these material things are used to bring about spiritual truth, insight, and knowledge. St. Michael's Day comes at the time of the year that kind of fits in with what's happening around us in nature. We who live in the Northern Hemisphere are now experiencing daily hours of darkness that exceed the daily hours of light. And this will go on until March 21st. Leaves on the trees are beginning to wither and drop. Darkness, cold, and decay are spreading gradually throughout nature around us. And today's readings speak of spiritual evil that afflicts us. They remind us that evil exists not only around us, but within us as well. We do not live in the best of all possible worlds now. That's for sure. And the daily news reinforces the reality of that evil. However, today's lessons for St. Michael and All Angels Day give us great hope and great confidence. They remind us that God's love and care for us is far greater than the evil around us, and it overcomes it. Daniel was reassured of that in the first reading. God in Jesus Christ has come to defeat evil on the cross. That is the message of St. Michael and all angels. God will prevail and bring evil and the evil one, Satan, to an end. That's the theme in today's lessons. That's the theme in the whole book of Revelation. And in the process of all of this, workings out of God's plan, the angels are agents and beings that God uses to combat evil. If you look through the Bible, you'll discover that angels are mentioned very often. According to the concordance, the complete concordance that I looked at, angel, either in singular or plural form, is mentioned 208 times in the Bible. And then there's several other cases where it's in the uh, possessive. A few examples, familiar ones. Psalm 91, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And in the book of Hebrews, at the beginning, 
chapter 2, verse 7. You have made them, human beings, a little lower than the angels. These are just two of many, many instances where the angels are mentioned in Holy Scripture. And angels are often featured in our hymns, in our liturgy in the hymnal that we have in front of us, hymn 877, we have this stanza. God who made the earth and heavens, darkness and light, you the day for work have given for rest the night. May your angels guard, may your angel guards defend us. Slumber sweet, your mercy send us. Holy dreams and hopes attend us all through the night. And Johann Sebastian Bach, in his great passion according to St. John, in the final hymn, which is also hymn 708 in our hymnal, has this refrain, these words. Lord, let at last thine angels come to Abram's bosom, bear me home, that I may die unfearing. And from a 17th century Lutheran funeral benediction, we have this. Now depart to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to the multitude of angels and archangels. May the angels take you into paradise. May the choir of angels welcome you. So we, here we have on St. Michael and All Angels Day, a reminder that God sends his angels on our behalf to fight for us, to support us. And one of the interesting things is that angels in popular lore have become kind of cute little chubby things fluttering around in sort of a harmless, cute way. But in a church in Hamburg, Germany, there is on the front of it portrayed St. Michael, he is not a chubby little cherub with cute rosy cheeks. He's a strong, powerful figure with a sword in his hand, reminding us that Michael is the one who defeated Satan. And so as we think about St. Michael and all angels days, let's remember that God, who in his loving power gave us Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and rise again to newness of life as a promise to us, also gives us the angels the powerful angels who are with us day and night, whether we realize it or not. The angels to help guide us and guard us and enable us to be his witnesses here on earth. St. Michael and All Angels Day, a good reminder that there's more to reality than we can see, touch, taste, and feel. Now would you please turn to the prayer of the day and with me, pray it as we close. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the service of angels and men in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may also help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please rise now as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> 